Hello guys, welcome to Fire Racer Workshop and in today's video we are going to be performing another experiment on Multisim. Now, I have already performed each and every experiment in your BTEC second semester in electronics device on ORCAD as well as on Tinkercad. So you can just click on the pop-up i button to check out the whole playlist for ORCAD and now you can just click on the pop-up i button to check the playlist for Tinkercad. Now without further ado, let's get started. Now this is my first video on Multisim and I'm going to be uploading more videos on Multisim because most of the students are being taught the software in their colleges so I'm going to be covering Multisim as well and a lot of students are just facing difficulties in using multisim so obviously it's just my duty to just cover the software as well along with the orcad as well as the tinkercad so orcad and tinkercad have been covered but the multisim is just all left out so the first experiment that i'm going to be doing is the common base configuration of bgt and however it's not the ideal thing to do but the thing is that obviously i'm just a bit late in making the videos and already the sleepers has just gone way too far and so i'm just going to be covering the rest of the experiments as soon as possible as well and so without further ado let's just open up multisim so let's just wait for it to load up and this is going to be the first video so i'm just going to be explaining a bit of basics so first of all if you're watching this through the playlist so already i would have explained all the basics to you so because in the playlist there might be some other videos that might have made by the time you just watch this video now first of all we're gonna go to place and components now again over here as well we're gonna go with the 2n 4 times 2 a transistor so this is the transistor that we'll be going with so we need this transistor let's just rotate it control r is a shortcut to rotate the transistor so you just press control r to rotate the transistor what we need is now we need the voltage sources and we're gonna go with power source and over here you can see dc power down this is the source that we need we're gonna double tap on it one source we need to place here and this is gonna be in this direction so we're gonna orient it right there and place it right here and we're gonna need another dc voltage source and we're gonna place it right here okay so we all set we need two resistors as well so let's just go to basics and uh, let's just go to the resistors the resistors that we need obviously we can just change the values later on but let's just go with the 100 ohm resistor so right here this is a 100 ohm resistor so we're gonna place two of these resistors and to be honest with you guys now we're not gonna be performing this experiment with the resistors in place for uh, some of the simulation for example either the output characteristics or in the input characteristics we are not going to be placing one of these resistors and I'm going to show you which resistor we won't be placing so let's just connect the circuit first of all and I would like to also mention that you can also place the multimeters if you like in your circuit but the thing is that we'll be using the DC sweep analysis in this particular experiment so we necessarily don't need to use multimeters if you need to like take manual readings in this for this particular circuit obviously you can just use multimeters but i ain't gonna use that because i ain't gonna take the manual readings it's just way too time consuming and i ain't i ain't gonna waste my time secondly for this particular uh, circuit and um you actually don't have for this particular software you don't have the option to change the x-axis variables and all that stuff so what we need is like we cannot just take the resistors otherwise the voltage that's just across this power supplies right here is not going to be equal to what we get at the collector and then the emitter respectively secondly we're going to mirror this transistor as well so we're going to flip it vertically i'm sorry flip it horizontally not vertically we're going to flip it horizontally so right here you can see the emitter is on the left hand side so this is what we need let's just fire up a circuit i'll just move this transistor down a bit wire up this first this one as well so obviously all the basic connections obviously you all know how to make in this particular circuit and all that stuff we also forget to add a ground so we also gonna add a ground to it so let's just go to sources and right here you can see there's a ground we need to add a ground right here that's it we're gonna connect the ground and we all set and what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the base of the transistor right here that's it the circuit has been complete let's just change the name of this power supply now let's just change it to let's just change it to so this is the voltage that's between the base and the emitter of the transistor so we're gonna change the name of the power supply so as you see the label so we're gonna go with the V so this will be the BE 
VBE, BE in caps. Hit on OK. This is a VBE. Over here for this one, we're going to change it to the voltage that's between the base and the collector. So this one is going to be VCB. So VCB is going to be the name of, the, of this particular one. ECB. Okay. Hit on OK. You all set now. So we don't need to care about like the voltage values and the uh, uh, all the voltage values all right here because obviously this does not matter first of all i'm going to be sorting the input characteristics for this particular circuit so we're going to make the r2 values okay r2 values we're going to go with zero ohm right here we're going to hit on zero so this is going to be a short circuit for this particular experiment so r2 value is going to be zero for this one and r1 value we're going to leave it at 100 ohms so let's just go to simulate and let's just go to analysis and simulation type now if you'd like to save your circuit first of all you can do so i mean if you if you'd like to save the circuit either just press ctrl s or just go to file and save so the circuit has been saved now so we are ready now let's just go to simulation edit simulation profile analysis and simulation type i mean we're gonna go with the ac sweep so just go with the ac sweep so not the ac sweep sorry the dc sweep i'm sorry i don't know what i'm saying right now so in the AC sweep, what you need to do is first of all we're gonna plot for the input characteristics. So for the AC sweep, we're gonna first of all select the source. We're also gonna enable the source too, by the way. So at the source one, we're gonna sweep this value right here. So this is the VBE. Obviously, it has been selected. So we're gonna go with zero from zero volts all the way up to 0 0.8 volts. All right, and an increment of 0 0.001 volt. All right, and for the source two, we're gonna be selecting the VCB. That is this source right here. We're going to start with 0 volts, go up to 20 volts, and an increment of, let's say, we're going to go with an increment of 5 volts. All right. That's all set. And the VBE is all set. And I'm just going to explain you in brief what's going to happen in the circuit. Now, for source 1, first of all, the source 2 will be selected, and the initial value, the start value is going to be 0 volts. Now, for this value, for 0 volts, now VCB, this particular voltage source will be at 0 volts. For 0 volts, this particular voltage source will be swept from 0 to 0 0.8 volts and in, in a step of 0 0.001 volts. So, this is how you're going to obtain your first plot. Then, the simulation is going to move to the source 2. And then in source 2, it's just going to increment the value by 5. So right now, what we'll have is the VCB is just going to become 5 volts. And for this particular value of VCB, the VBE is going to be swept from 0 volts to a value of 0 0.8 volts in an increment of 0 0.001 volts. So increment is that how much the value will increase after the starting value. So for example, if the initial value is 0 volts, then if an increment has been set to this value, so the next value that it will be taking, the simulation will be taking is 0 0.001 volts and then 0 0.002 volts and so on and so forth. And it will go up to 0 0.8 volts. So you're just going to get thousands of readings in this particular experiment. So for this one, now again, after it's just like swept the values from 0 to 0 0.8 volts in an increment of 0 0.001 volts then it's again going to go to source 2 and it's just going to sweep the value again it's by an increment of 5 volts now this will be at 10 volts so vcb will be at 10 volts and for 10 volts this one will be again swept from 0 to 0 0.8 volts and this is how you're going to obtain your multiple graphs so this will just make your work a lot easier now let's go to the output so for the output what we need is a current that's flowing through the emitter of the transistor so for the collect for the current that's flowing to the emitter of the transistor, there's one trick that you need to use. You you have to go to the add expression. And now you're gonna go to the ABS. So this is the absolute function. So we're gonna go with the absolute function. So this is the function that we're gonna select, just double click on it, or just single click on it. And what we need is the absolute function for the current that's flowing to the emitter of the transistor. So we're gonna go with the IQ1E. So this is the current that's flowing to the emitter of the transistor. Hit on OK. So this expression has been added. So this is going to be your y-axis variable for this particular simulation and you don't need to ch uh, change anything else for over here. Now let's just click on save and let's just run this simulation. Over here you can see the simulation's result has been completed. So let's just go, I mean 0 0.7 volts, so let's go with 0 0.7 volts, hit on save and now let's just run the simulation again. Now over here you can see at 0 0.7 volts the graph is like almost, uh, it's just almost a perfect graph. So this is the output characteristics, I mean this is the input characteristics for your common base transistor. Now we are going to plot the output characteristics for this particular configuration of BJT. So this is the common base configuration. Now first of all we are going to change the resistor value. So this time this resistor right here is going to be 0. And this resistor right here is going to be 100 ohms. So you need to make these changes. 
So now let's just simulate a circuit for the output characteristics. Now for the output characteristics, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to simulation and we're gonna just edit a simulation profile. Now first of all, in the primary sweep, what we need is the VCB. So that's the voltage that's between the collector and the base of the transistor. So this is what we're gonna sweep mainly. So we're gonna go with those chart value of zero, N value of 20, and in an increment of 0 0.01 volts. And VBE is gonna be our secondary source. So this is gonna be VBE, and VBE will be swept from zero to five in an increment of one. So this is all right. So over here, I have just actually changed these values. So you might have to change this. So five volts and one volt. So this is how it's just gonna go. Now, please just like copy down all this, all the simulation parameters right here, and I'm just gonna explain you in brief what's gonna happen. Now, for the source two, first of all, the value will be zero volts, and this one. So the source two is our VBE, that's the voltage between the base and the emitter. So this will be zero volts, and for this value of zero volts, the VCB, that's this particular voltage source, will be swept from zero all the way up to 20 volts in an increment of 0 0.01 volts. So a graph will be plotted when this voltage source is at zero. Then when the graph has all plotted up, then the source 2 is going to be swept. Now it's just going to be incremented by a voltage value of 1. Now the increment of 1. So it's just going to be at 1 volts then. And at this particular time, the source 1 will be uh, will be like, will be like swept from 0 to 20 volts in an increment of 0 0.01 volts. So this is how this simulation particularly works. So I just like explained it, explained it all in brief. Um, let's just go ahead with the output. So in the output, what you need is what you need is the current that's flowing through the collector of the transistor. So we're gonna click on IQ and IC. So this is the current that's flowing to the collector of the transistor. Let's just click on Add. Uh, let's just click on Save. Uh, let's just run the simulation. So over here, you can see or the simulation has been complete but you can see just like a one flaw in the simulation that is that it is only in the active region so there is no saturation region and only and there is also a cutoff region right here so this is the cutoff region the pink line right here this is the cutoff region but you can't see the saturation region so to bring about the saturation region what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit the simulation let's just do one thing we can just go with the start value of minus 0 0.8 okay so let's just change the start value to minus 0 0.8 instead of 0 volts and this is so why we are choosing the value of minus 0 0.8 or let's just do it minus 0 0.7 because there are no resistor so if you need to obtain the graph in the saturation region so this junction right here the base emitter junction and the base collector junctions needs to be forward bias and to forward bias this one so this particular voltage source should be in the negative value so therefore we have to just start with the negative value right here we're gonna go with zero minus zero point seven volts because that's the voltage drop uh, in a PN junction transistor in a PN junction diode. Essentially, the base emitter, the base collector junction is a PN junction, so obviously we're gonna go with the zero point seven volts. And as there's no resistor connected to limit the current, so therefore the maximum uh, value that we can go with is zero point seven volts for this particular one. Let's just hit on save. Uh, let's just run the simulation one more time. Ta-da! You can see now all the simulations have been completed. Now you can see this is this particular region right here. This particular region is called the saturation region. And if you need to like explain, like if you just need the saturation region a bit more, then you can just like increase the value. Like you have to just see, okay, at which value you can just obtain the saturation region the best. So you're just gonna increase the value by 0 0.8 volts again. So let's click on save and run. Now you can see, now it is a bit more clear now where the saturation region is. So this particular region is called the saturation region. This is the active region and this is the cutoff region for the transistor, for the amplifier. Now over here you can see all the uh, all the current values are stable even if we are increasing. Now what this actually shows us is that, for example, if we don't increase the current that's flowing between the base and the emitter of the transistor, okay, base and the emitter, so if the current that's flowing to the base and the emitter of the transistor is unchanged, so no matter whatever value of voltage you put over here, Okay, when this uh, when the uh, transistor is uh, like simulate is being used in the active region, so whatever voltage value you put right here, okay, a continuous current is just gonna flow. A constant current is just gonna flow. The current ain't gonna change at all. So over here you can see the graph is a straight line even if we are increasing the voltage. So this is how it just provides a lot of voltage amplification. But the current amplification for this kind of uh, kind of configuration is zero. I mean, in fact, it's just a negative value because the current that's flowing to the emitter is actually more than what's just flowing to the collector but it's almost equal like it's almost equal because it's just like values or uh, like raised by a factor called alpha and alpha has a value of 0 0.98 or 0 0.99 
So obviously there is not a much difference between the emitter current and the collector current. So they can be always calculated, like, they can be always assumed to be equal. So this is how this particular circuit works. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, next I'm going to be covering the half wave rectifier, then the full wave rectifier, and then the standard type rectifier. So stay tuned for those videos and thank you for watching. And obviously you can just like, if you need to, um, if you need this region, to, this particular region, if you need to just take it up to like almost like uh, zero or something like that, something below zero. So you can obviously uh, in the simulation settings right here, analysis and simulation, you can just go with a more negative value. Like for example, like go with minus one volts or something, but right now, but actually it's just like, okay for my taste. Otherwise it's just gonna, the current is just gonna flow like uh, a lot of current is just going to flow for especially for this lower um, emitter current values so obviously i'm not just going to do that so the circuit has been completely simulated and thank you for watching this video and smash the like button if you just like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you in the next video bye bye